Okay, hi, hello everyone and welcome to digitalh.com. Today we would be going ahead and we would be building a to-do maker by using object-oriented programming skills in PHP. So we would be building a class for every single thing. So, as you know, from user registration to their login, in order to create, delete, or edit to-do, we would be building a class for every single thing. And if you are new to object-oriented programming, then I will suggest you, you can go ahead and watch some of my beginner's videos on it, and then go ahead and start following me from this particular video. So out here, I would be creating a new folder with a name called classes. And inside it, I would be creating my very first class that's gonna be a database connection. So I'm gonna say class dot database dot PHP. And uh, guys, uh, in order to make a connection with the database, uh, we would be using an inbuilt PHP class that would be uh, the PDO connection. Okay, so again, if you have no idea about it, I have a video on how to make a PDO connection, how to insert in the database with a prepared statement, you can surely uh, get a reference from you. So out here, I would be creating a new class. I'm gonna name this one to mm, DB connection. Okay. <clears throat> and out here on the top, I would be creating a couple of so the very first one gonna be a protected uh, variable call db con. Uh, then would be a public variable call db name that would be a database name. So it would be to do uh, another public variable call db user for me is root and a public variable call db password that would be null for me and another public variable call uh, db host that one gonna be local host so i have defined everything out here on the top now i would be creating a method inside this particular class and the name of the method would be uh, function let's say connect okay uh, here i'm gonna say dollar with this db con and this is actually a reference to this particular variable we created on the top so guys anytime you are calling uh, any member inside a class and you will have to uh, you know call him like dollar this and the name of the variable or the name of the method so you will have to do it like this next thing i'm going to say make it equals to a new instance of pdo class and then i'm going to say my sql host they're gonna be equals to uh, dollar this db host then gonna be db name that will be equals to dollar this db name and then I'm gonna say dollar this uh, db user and dollar this db password okay and here I'm gonna say return dollar this db con. And guys, you know what we can do is we can actually wrap up everything inside a try and a catch statement. So I'm gonna say try and catch here. So you know if there would be any errors, we're gonna you know run them as an exception. So I'm gonna say PDO exception dollar e, and I believe there is some error except like this okay and here I'm gonna say return dollar e get message okay that seems fine to me yeah so the next thing we would be doing is we would be creating a class to manage all of our users so I would be going ahead and I would be saying class dot manage users dot php and out here uh, very first we need to uh, you know include our database file so i'm going to say include once class dot database dot php okay and here i want to create a new class with name manage users and out here on the very top i want to create another public variable 
uh, I don't want to say public dollar length. Uh, next, I'm going to create a construct function. And guys, if you have no idea what construct function is, uh, then let me tell you. Uh, anytime you will create an instance of this particular class, this construct function will run automatically for you. So you will not have to call this particular method. It will run automatically for you. So uh, every time, you know, we're going to do anything, uh, we would be creating a database in the construct, uh, uh, sorry, database connection in the construct function. So I'm going to say dollar db connection will be equals to a new instance of this class okay and I'm gonna say dollar this length that would be the variable we created out here on the top that will be equals to uh, dollar db connection and the function we created here connect. okay <clears throat> and I'm gonna say return dollar this now guys let me explain uh, everything to you one by one what we did out here is on the very top we created a new class with the name db connection and we created a new function inside it called connect so we have only created them or probably i would say we have only defined them you will have to you know in order to make any connection we will have to run them so what we are doing is once we're gonna you know deal with our database then only we're gonna call this class and the function inside it and if you are totally confused about it then go ahead and leave some comments maybe you can get some help from you uh, next thing I'm gonna say a new function called create users okay or probably you can say register users that seems more appropriate register users so at the time of registering a user we do need their username we need a password uh, we need their IP address and at what time and at what date so these are the minimum requirements we do need in order to you know register any user if you want we can add some later like an email or something else next thing I'm, I'm gonna create a variable I'm gonna say dollar query is equal to dollar this link prepare so we would be running the prepared statement in order to save our database from the SQL injection okay I'm gonna say insert into users the name of our table that we haven't created but don't worry we could be creating it in a moment uh, then I'm gonna say username password uh, their IP address uh, let me say date uh, let me say time or you know probably we can say reg date like the time they're registered and the which time here I'm gonna say values uh, will be equals to a caution mark a caution mark so we probably need five values so I have five caution marks out there okay uh, then here and this one here on the very top <coughs> Then I'm going to say dollar values uh, will be equals to an array of everything we are getting as a parameter inside this function. So I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it here. Then I'm going to say dollar query uh, execute uh, this probably dollar values. Okay. And then I'm going to say dollar counts will be equals to dollar query. Uh, a row count. So let me explain it to you once again. Uh, what we are doing is we are creating a prepared statement. We are saying insert into a into our table users, and the value is gonna be this. So we are doing it in a different way. You know, we are not uh, entering values out here like dollar username. We are not doing that. We are creating the prepared statements in order to save our database from the SQL injection. And then we are, you know, using these parameters as an array here. And then we are executing this particular prepared query that we did on the top. And then we are checking how many rows have been affected from this query. So if we are able to create a successful user, 
then it would be equals to one. So I want to say return dot counts. Okay. Uh, out here, I'm going to say dot users will be equals to a new instance of this class users. And guys, if you remember, we have only defined these functions and this class, we will have to run it. So very first, we need to create an instance of the class. Then we will have to access all the methods inside it. So this time we only want to access this particular method. So I want to say uh, echo dot users and the method would be register users. And for the parameters, I'm going to say name to Bob and his password to Bob, his IP address to 127.0.0.1 with a time to let's say 12 o'clock and a date to 29. 2012 okay <clears throat> so we can probably go ahead and we can create uh, this particular table inside the database to do and guys I have already created this database in the advance if you haven't did that then go ahead and do it right now oh I have a table too okay that's awesome and I have an entry too because I was actually you know checking it out so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop this table I want to say empty, not probably empty. I want to say drop it, and I'm going to create it from the scratch. So I want to say users with seven fields. And sure, I'm going to say <coughs> ID, a username, okay, and I'm going to say password. The IP address, then I'm gonna be time, gonna be date, and I'm gonna say user status. Like if you you know if you wanna deactivate a user later, so I'm gonna say this gonna be a work chart to probably 20. This one gonna be a work chart to 40. Uh, this one would be a work chart as well to 40. IP address to 20 work chart. Password would be say 100 and username let's say 150 and for the ID we can make it an auto increment and a primary key so primary key from here and the auto increment come back save this particular table and it's oh it's not done there was something funny here Okay guys, what I'm going to do, I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to create a table, you can do it too. Okay guys, so I'm done creating this table and uh, you can see we do not have anything inside it. So I'm going to go ahead, <coughs> I'm going to hit refresh, I'm going to browse the table called classes and I'm going to run this class, it's a zero, that's awesome, because we haven't got any entry. So that means there would be some errors and we will have to find those errors first. So I'm going to go to my database class. Let me check out whether we are able to uh, make a connection properly or not. So the deep links should be used. So everything seems fine out here. And I'm going to change it to manage users as well. So I'm going to say, hello, query, execute, run all the news. Five, uh, five zero. Okay, guys. So probably I've got the errors, and uh, the errors are very first. I have to say this one to time, and this one to date, because if you will notice out here, we have date and time. And the next error is I have said IP address, and the spelling is wrong there, so I have to make it you know double D. And there is one more error, as you know, like uh, <clears throat> the values need to be uh, alternative to each other. So out here. It's IP address, and then here it says date, and I'm saying time here. So I'm gonna say time, date here, and time here. Probably everything will work fine. Yep, that did. Go ahead and browse the table, and here it shows the very first entry at this particular time and on this day. So, guys, this is a very first <coughs> function that we created inside the class manage users. In the next video, we will be going ahead, we will be building the front end for the user registration. 
And at that point of time, you will not have to do anything inside this class. You will just have to call this function the way we did here. So I'm going to see you guys next time. Goodbye.